Good morning, everyone. Yeah, trust that you have had a very fruitful time at the Singapore Patient Conference so far. Yeah, my name is Joshua. I'm a physiotherapist working at Tan Tock Seng Hospital. All right, and uh, I'm currently working in the geriatrics department. So on a daily basis, what happens is I work very closely with um, older patients, and uh, we try to um, work with them to get them a little bit better on their feet. Okay. So many times during the initial assessment phase, what we usually would do with them is to go through this process we call goal setting. Right? So we sit down with them and we start to talk to them and I'll get them to explain to me basically um, what are some of the things they are hoping to achieve, what are some of the things that um, matters to them. And from there we formulate a treatment plan and then uh, we work with them until we meet those goals. All right. And so, um, as I go through this process for a number of years now, what I'm increasingly seeing is that a lot of times when they um, talk to me about the goals they'd like to achieve, one of the key goals is functional independence, right? They don't like, um, they don't want their family to have to, they don't want to be dependent on their family taking care of them. They don't want to be confined to resting in bed all day. Um, they like to walk if possible at home and even better if they can go into the community as well, right? That's, that way they can socialize with their friends um, without having any uh, fears of falling or, or, or a decrease in balance. So I think the topic that I'm going to talk about today may be very relevant to a lot of us here today um, and even to your loved ones as well if you're a caregiver with us today, all right? So without further ado, I'll just go into my topic today. We'll be talking about improving balance and preventing falls. All right, so this is a brief background uh, of what I'm going to talk about today. All right, so mainly three points. The first point on uh, giving an overview, a background on falls and what are the common causes for falls. Then next, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, balance, what happens to your balance when you age, and um, falls as well, um, how it's related uh, to your decreased balance as you age as well. And lastly, I'm um, talking about the ways you can improve your balance and decrease your risk of falls. So mainly just three points, a background on falls, um, what you need to know about balance, and what you can do about it, okay? So, um, some of us seated here today may have this question, falls, is it a healthcare issue that's worth discussing? Is it a healthcare issue that's worth addressing at all in the first place? All right, and so I'm going to run you through some statistics, and hopefully at the end of it, you have some insights uh, to this question that is posted here. All right. So the World Health Organization defines fall as an event where a person uh, unintentionally uh, comes to rest and come in contact with, a gr with the ground or any other lower surfaces. All right. And uh, falls is becoming a very important public health care objective all across the world. And the main reason of that is because uh, it is very, very common among older people. All right. According to the World Health Organization, what has been found is that approximately one in three people above the age of 65 and over fall each year. And when they went to look at this population again and they followed up with this patient, this population, what they found was that over half of them have uh, repeated falls. Okay? So in Singapore, falls is the leading cause of injuries among older people. Um, some of the older people manage to escape falls with uh, some minor bruises and cuts and they get on with their lives after that. But a significant proportion of them end up sustaining injuries severe enough, such as fractures, that they end up, in, uh, end up being admitted to the hospital. So in Singapore, that figure stands at around 8,000. So according to statistics reviewed by the Ministry, uh, Health Promotion Board, over the last three years, in each of the last three years, at least 8,000 older adults above the age of 65 were admitted to hospitals because of falls. All right. So as a result of injuries related to falls, a large proportion of them present with reduced overall function, which predisposes them to early admission to long-term facilities such as a nursing home. So in a study performed in America among a group of older adults who sustained hip fractures following a fall, the study revealed that only 20%, only 25% made full recovery. 40% ended up uh, being placed in the nursing home because of limitations in function. 50% of them were dependent on some form of walking aids. 
upon discharge. And 20% of them did not make it past a year after the fall. These are very scary findings, isn't it? But that's not all. Okay, it, it showed up. <laughs> okay. Among the older adults who fell, whether they sustained injuries or not, severe enough to warrant admission to the hospital, a large number of them developed this fear avoidance behaviour, which is what we term fear of falling, like what you can see in the purple diagram over here. So because they are so fearful of falling again, they start to avoid activities uh, that they would normally perform without thinking twice, like walking, getting up, transferring to a chair, or even sitting over the edge of bed. And they start becoming so fearful of doing so these activities. And in my experience with these patients, a lot of them would refuse adamantly to even sit over the edge of bed, mainly because they are so fearful of falls. And if we do not do anything to address their fear of falls, and we leave them to continue hiding in their shells and avoiding activity, over time, this will, redu re this will lead to a loss in muscular strength and endurance, which will cause them to be more susceptible to another fall in future. And this is a downward spiral, because the next time another fall happens, this group of people, they're going to be even more fearful of a fall, they're going to avoid even more activities, and there'll be an even greater functional decline. And so that will put them at a higher risk of falls. So this is downward spiral happening here, right? And over time, over time, um, if we do not address this fear cycle, what happens is that it leads to an increased number of admissions uh, to the hospital, a further loss in independence and function, increased dependence on family because now they have to take care um, of these patients with increasing care needs, and lastly, of course, increased and expenditure as well with more hospital stays. So what can be done to stop this fall cycle, right? So if you want to truly evaluate what are, uh, how we can stop the fall cycle, then first we have to try to understand what are the causes for them falling in the first place. If you can understand the causes of them falling in the first place, then we can implement interventions that are more targeted at uh, treating uh, what they're presenting with, okay? So when we examine the causes of falls, the causes of falls can be briefly classified into two main categories, mainly extrinsic factors, which has to do with the external environment that an individual is in, and intrinsic factors that relates to factors within the individual himself. So I'm just going to give you some common examples, some common causes of falls, okay? So in a extrinsic uh, factors for falls, okay, some common Factors in the external environment that could predispose a person to fall would be, for example, a cluttered home environment. How many of you, your house, if I were to go to your house today, looks like that? <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, but if there's so much clutter going on in the house, right, then it's very easy for a person, especially whose balance is not so good, to sleep and trip over things. I mean, even if it's myself, I, I, I don't reckon I can get through the room very safely as well, right? So a good way to, to start would be maybe getting somebody in to come and help tidy up the home environment. Okay? Other common extrinsic factors are maybe slippery floor or even inappropriate footwear. All right? So if you want to reduce your risk of falling, uh, do try to ensure that the floor is dry before walking over it and make sure to put on adequate and uh, good footwear. So it's always a good investment if you invest in uh, good non-slip footwear. All right, with those with a uh, buckle uh, or velcro, so those that gives it more grip uh, compared to the sleepers that you see over here, which comes off very easily and becomes a trip hazard. Okay. So in this slide, I just wanted to show you a brief home safety checklist that you can readily find online and adopt at your home to reduce your risk of falls. So I'll just let you read through it yourself. There are um, many factors that, that, that uh, you can look at at your house and uh, what you can, if there is, there is also an action plan, what you should do following it. All right, it can be readily found online, so you can find it and try to adopt the same practice so that you can minimize uh, the risk of falls due to extrinsic factors. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, so common factors. Now we're talking about intrinsic factors, factors within the individual himself. All right, so some common intrinsic factors are chronic conditions that affect an individual's mobility, such as osteoarthritis, or Parkinson's disease, the way they're walking is a bit different from how they used to walk. In these circumstances, it'll be good to follow up with your regular doctors or physiotherapists and they can perform further evaluation uh, to try to assess the way they're walking 
and then they can implement some strategies and work with them so it can work a little bit better and a little bit safer as well. Another factor that's commonly identified includes the consumption of a, a numerous medications. With all medications that you take, there are potential side effects as well, right? And so if you are regularly consuming a large number of medications, it may be a good idea during your follow-up with your regular doctors to review the medications again and uh, for you to update the, the medication list accordingly. Another factor would be poor vision. Right? A lot of people fall because they cannot see very well. If that's the case, then it would be advisable for you to seek medical attention um, and get it treated so that you decrease your risk of falls. And for the purposes of this talk today, uh, what I'm going to be focusing a lot more about is on balance. All right? So, the first question, what is balance? Okay. A very uh, simplistic uh, way of defining balance is our bl body's ability to keep an upright posture in quiet standing or during movements. And our sense of balance would help us keep steady and confident when we are performing activities of daily living. Like for example, getting up from a chair, reaching up towards getting a, an object from a high cupboard, um, crossing the overhead bridge and climbing stairs as well. All right, so we need a good level of balance for us to uh, achieve this task. But if you want to be a bit more technical, right? Balance is, uh, can be also referred to the ability to maintain our body's center of mass over its base of support. So this is a very technical thing. It's very hard to understand for a lot of us, right? So I'm just going to try to break it down a little bit more so that maybe you can understand a little bit better. All right, so base of support. I'm just going to talk about the, the, the words bolded first. I'll try to define it so that maybe you know what, what it means a little bit better. Base of support is just simply the area of the body that's in contact with the support surface. So I'm just going to give you a very brief example. So for example, you see me standing over here, right? So what parts of my body are in contact with the ground? Yeah, the base of my foot, right? So my base of support is the area demarcated by the contact between my foot and the ground. Simple as that, all right? And so if I choose to be fancy today, right, and I want to stand in different positions, right, for example, A is just simply standing like that now. If I want to keep one foot ahead of the other, right, then my base of support changes, all right? If I want to uh, trick myself more, I try to stand on one leg, which I can't really do very well, um, then it's something like C. So you can see that the base of support reduces significantly, all right, compared to A, which is a normal stance where I have both feet on the ground. So our ability to maintain balance is simply whether we can keep our weight over our base of support. All right? So if our base of support is bigger, then naturally our ability to keep uh, balance and feel stabilized is better. So that's why you see a lot of times if you watch uh, sumo wrestling or if you watch rugby, for example, right? Well, they like to stand with their legs very far apart. Why is that so? That's so that they can keep a bigger base of support, it's easier to keep their weight over the base of support, so it's harder for the opponents to tip them over. All right? But a lot of us struggle with the example I talked about earlier, single leg stance, standing on one leg. Why is that so? Because now my base of support is so small, it's just within that one leg. And now I need to keep my weight over, up and over this right foot to, for myself to keep balance. All right? And so this is basically the concept, right? Uh, a basic concept on what balance is. Okay, so if you look at the diagram here, right? so in the first two diagrams, you see that the person's weight is over the base of support, which is why they're very much stable, right? In the last diagram, you see when they're leaning forward on one leg, the, the weight is positioned out of the base of support. And, the pay, and if he does nothing, absolutely nothing to save himself, then you end up falling over. Okay, but of course, our body is very smart. And there are many systems in place to prevent that from happening, to help us maintain our balance even though our centre of mass is out of our base of support. Okay? And so now I'm just going to talk about the systems in place to help us keep our balance. All right? So there are uh, many information that's received from primarily three uh, inputs that we have. So firstly, vision. What we see with our eyes, the structures in our inner ears and our joint position will tell us where we are in space. So then, these three inputs will send signals to our brain to let us know, hey, uh, this is where I am in space, whether I'm, gonna, whether I'm still upright or whether I'm leaning over, whether I'm falling forward. So my eyes, my eyes 
my information perceived from my inner ear, uh, my joints will tell me where I am in space. All right? And the brain will go through uh, a process where they will process the information and analyze the information, try to eliminate all the conflicting information, and then uh, it will translate uh, impulses to my muscles to take the necessary actions uh, from there. All right? So I talked about conflicting in information, for example, right, just now. So I, just to give you a quick example. So for, for example, if I am on an MRT train from Jurong to, let's say, Raffles Place, for example, all right, and uh, it's a very unfortunate day, so my train breaks down, all right, and the train breaks down only happens during my side, but on the other side, the train is, the, there's no signaling error, the train is still going well, all right. So I'm sitting on a chair, I'm looking out of the window, all right. And because the other side, there's nothing wrong, right? So the train is going past, nothing wrong. My eye sees that the train is moving, and so it tells my brain, hey, something is moving, right? But the structures in my inner ear and my joints tell me, hey, actually, I'm stationary. It's not that I am moving, it's that the train outside is moving. So your brain has to process all this information, deal with all the conflicting information, and then send the impulses to our muscles, um, uh, and our muscles will then cause us to move our neck, our body, our trunk, our upper limbs, lower limbs, so that we can maintain our balance. All right. So this is a very simplistic way to understand the systems involved in balance. Okay. Uh, what happens with aging? All right. So with aging, our sensory systems uh, uh, would deteriorate with age. Right. So um, I mean, when we were younger, a lot younger, uh, our sense of vision is a lot better than we are now. Right. And uh, sometimes, uh, with age, there are things such as cataracts and things like that, blurry vision. And so our sensory inputs are very affected because um, of this deterioration that happens with age. Okay? So then that means that when they pass signals into our brain, uh, the signals will be less, obviously, and will be delayed as well. All right. Last time, I, I would be able to spot danger or something maybe 10 meters away. Now, maybe one meter, I need to wait for the danger to come before I say, oh, no, I need to do something about it. All right. So all this information um, comes in a lot slower. Next thing, it takes a longer time for our brain to also process this information as we age as well and to formulate uh, and to send the right impulses to perform fast, perform the right activities to prevent a fall. So as we grow older as well, what happens with our muscles and our joints is that our muscles become weaker. If we don't exercise, our joints become uh, a lot stiffer. We cannot move as well as we used to move. So sometimes you see people walking with their knees bent like that because they've lost the range to do that. Sometimes um, muscles, they become weaker if we don't train it. So um, all in all, all these factors put together, it compounds together and it causes a person to be at increased risk of falls if uh, he has the age. So this, uh, at the start of the talk, I, talk, I gave a very brief background and I said that uh, falls is very common among older, older adults, uh, that it is, uh, there are very significant consequences uh, and, and injuries that can happen with a fall. Right? And then I talked about balance, systems of balance, and how your balance is affected when you're getting older. Right? So then a lot of people will ask me now, so what? Does it mean that now that I'm getting older, which is an inevitable process for all of us, is poor balance and falls an inevitable outcome of aging? And what can we do about it? All right? The good news is, first of all, that it is not an inevitable part of aging, and you can do something about it. All right. There are many, many research uh, that are published that shows the benefits of exercise in minimizing your risk of falls and improving your balance. And these exercises are specifically strengthening exercises and balance exercises. Okay, so I'm just going to spend a bit more time talking about that. So I talked so much about balance, right? And I'm sure all of you are dying to find out, right? Whether hey, my balance is good or not. Nah? How do I know whether my balance is good or not? Correct? So there are ways for you to test your balance, and these are three very quick tests that you can do at home to assess how good you are on your feet. But I need to put a disclaimer at the bottom here. Yeah? So if you intend to perform this task at home, always make sure that there's a sturdy surface because we're challenging your balance here. You may always lose your, your, your balance, and um, if you have a sturdy, su sturdy surface around you, it's easier for you to hold on to it if you lose your balance. Okay? And if you still don't feel confident, 
always make sure that there's an able-bodied family member, friend, or even a therapist beside you that they can, uh, and so they can catch you if you, if you lose your balance. Lah. All right? So uh, we're going to talk about the benefits of balance exercises. And overall, um, what balance exercise does for you is that it improves your steadiness, control during movement, improves your self-esteem and confidence when performing daily activities, and it reduces the risk of injury by reducing your risk for falls. Okay, so basically we are trying to combat the changes with aging and our balance system with more exercise. Okay, so before I go into the, an exercise program that we can try out at home, all right, some of the tips that uh, I can share with you uh, based on my experience and my encounter with patients when I lead them through and I initiate a, a series of balancing exercises with them are as follows. First of all, when I always do balancing exercises with them, the first thing they ask, they'll, they'll try for a while and then they tell me, hey, cannot lah, Joshua. Uh, my balance not good lah. I feel very unsteady. I don't want to do any more. Then, then they stop from there. But it is perfectly normal to feel unsteady at first because we are challenging your balance systems, right? And so you, your, a normal response might be you might wobble a little bit, you might have to take a few steps, make some adjustments, and that's perfectly okay. Because when we are working with your balance, um, these are sort of things that can happen and your body will learn to um, adapt to a decreased uh, balance and try to, try to get you a little bit better next time. All right? So as you continue with these exercises, uh, what you should notice is that your sense of balance should improve. All right? And you should find that you are able to do this task a little bit uh, better the next time. So the first time when you go home, if uh, you go home today and you work on the exercise regime, right, and you find it hey, a bit unsteady, uh, that's normal. All right? If you are very fearful, um, always have uh, good safety, safety nets like, around you. So first of all, safety net will be standing close to a sturdy support, like I said earlier. Right? Something that is not very flimsy, like this desk, for example, you see it moves like that. Right? If I were to <laughs> Use this as a, uh, as a surface for me to hold my balance. If I were to fall, right, this table will fall onto me. <laughs> it doesn't help me at all. Right? So choose a sturdy surface when you're doing these exercises. And if you're not feeling confident, always have somebody to supervise you if you don't feel confident yet. All right? um, some of you have pets around. Pets are not good supervisors for you. Okay? <laughs> all right. So what you can do with balance exercises is, first of all, you can start off um, in a very safe manner, have two hands placed on a sturdy support for uh, a sturdy surface for support. All right. When you feel like you're getting a little bit better, what you can then do is to take one hand off and try to balance with just one hand on the support. All right. If you can do that, then you can progress a little bit more. Take out two fingers so that you're only balancing on three fingers. All right. Then two fingers, one finger. Eventually, you should be able to do it without holding on to anything while maintaining your balance. All right. Uh, if you are intending to do these exercises outdoors, uh, please wear supportive shoes. And lastly, um, when we are trying to improve a person's balance, right, we talked about strengthening and balance exercises. right. So with strengthening exercises, it's normal to feel slight soreness the next day. All right? That's a perfectly normal response. All right? Eventually, uh, you'll feel a little bit better and then the pain will go away. And then uh, you can tolerate uh, greater, greater intensity of exercises. But if you feel any abnormal sensations or if you feel a very severe pain for a prolonged period of time, then it will be a good idea to stop your exercises and uh, get it checked out first before you resume it again. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to talk about six exercises. This is an exercise program that you can find. All right. And the recommended guidelines are the same as the national guidelines that we have in Singapore, All right. published by the Health Promotion Board that we should be doing two to three times of balancing exercises per week. All right? And this is the recommended guidelines. All right? This is a brief exercise program uh, which you can find easily available on the internet at home. They are on various uh, social media sites like YouTube and things like that. It's very easily accessible and most importantly for us Singaporeans, it's free. All right? So we can assess this site, uh, assess this program very easily because a lot of times when I start a new exercise program with a class, what they say is, and when I go home, uh, you're not going to come home with me, right? Then who is going to do exercises with me? What do I do at home? You know? So by directing you guys to available resources, it's easier for you to follow up after. Right? I'm going to be playing a video of these six exercises, and the narrator will guide you through the six exercises, okay? Okay. 
And at the end, I will also be posting up the link. There's so an underlying myth that falls are an inevitable part of getting old. The surprising truth is our risk of a fall decreases with this one simple thing. Exercise. You see, starting at 30, our muscles can lose up to 8% of their strength every decade. So, by the time we're 80, we potentially lost 40% of our strength. We can help reverse this trend, though, with six simple exercises widely used by physiotherapists to keep us mobile and independent as we age. All you need is a steady support, sensible shoes, and a little time each day. Exercise one, heel raises. Stand tall and hold your support. Then lift your heels off the floor, taking your weight through the front part of your feet. Hold this position for three seconds. Then slowly lower your heels to the floor. Repeat this 10 times. Exercise two, toe raises. Stand tall and hold your support again. This time, raise your toes, taking your weight in your heels. Keep upright and don't stick your bottom out. Hold this position for three seconds, then slowly lower your toes. Repeat this 10 times. Exercise three, heel toe stand. Stand tall sideways on your support with one hand on your support. Now put one foot directly in front of the other to make a straight line as shown. While looking ahead, take your hand off the support if you can and balance for 10 seconds. Take your front foot back to hip width apart and place the other foot in front instead. Balance again for 10 seconds. Exercise four, one leg stand. Stand close to your support and hold it with one hand. Now balance on one leg, keeping the support knee soft and your posture upright. Hold this position for 10 seconds, then repeat on the other leg. Exercise five, heel toe walking. We'll be walking forwards for this one, so use the support like a sideboard. Stand tall with one hand on your support. While looking ahead, place one foot directly in front of the other so your feet form a straight line. Then move the back foot in front of the other. Continue a steady walking action for 10 steps. Then take the feet back to hip width apart. Turn around and repeat the steps in the other direction. Exercise six, sit to stand. Grab a sturdy chair and sit tall towards the front with your feet tucked slightly back. Now lean forward slightly and stand up. If you need to, place your hands on the chair for extra support. Carefully step back until your legs touch the chair. Then slowly lower yourself back into the chair. Repeat this 10 times. And that's it. Keep these up and you'll help your muscles stay strong. If you'd like to keep these exercises handy, download our PDF. This advice is brought to you by the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy. All right, so six simple exercises you can do at home, not very challenging. All right, and this is a good starting point for you. All right, if you're not already doing any balance exercise, this is a good starting point. All right, okay. So this is the place I talk to you about if you want to take out your camera and take a picture or you want to jot down. The links are here above. Um, these are available resources you can access at home. All right. The first one is a PDF folder. It teaches you how to get up from a fall as well. Um, how to manage your home environment, what are things to look out for for fall, exercises like that. Second one is a campaign by the National Health Promotion Board on seven easy exercises. If you're not already doing any exercise, um, this is another video, another resource you can go up to. Very useful resources. They come in all four languages English, Mandarin, Chi English, Mandarin, Tamil, and Malay. Yep, I got that right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Oh, do you need to get back here? Anybody else? Okay. All right. So, summary. 
So to sum up, false is a healthcare issue worth addressing, and our balance declines as we age, and as a result, our risk for falls increases. However, falls and impaired balance is not inevitable with age and can be pre prevented, and you can do something to improve your balance to maintain your steadiness, independence, and prevent falls. All right? So lastly, I have another video just to sum things up. Um, it's a very motivational video. It inspires me. I hope it inspires you as well. Uh, it shows the limitless possibility if you are able to maintain your balance even as you age. So we can watch this video. Amazing, huh? Yeah. So if they can do it, you can too. All right? Okay. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I left my email at the end. If you have any questions that you don't get time to get addressed today, you can send an, can send an email to me, and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. All right? Okay. That's all. Any questions for me? Thank you, thank you. First of all, have you had it checked out before? At, uh, have you seen the doctors or physios before yeah, about yeah, it? No, no problem. No fractures or anything. So, so the ligaments and everything are fine. Yeah, la. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, that's good. So, you can... You, talk, you talked earlier about uh, bone building exercises, right? And essentially, anything that uh, we do, for example, when we put weight through our legs right now, right? It's already a bone building exercise because uh, our bone grow with increased weight bearing over it. Correct. So if you are worried about your specific conditions or limitations, what I think you should do is to see whether you can go to a physio. They can do a proper assessment. Because from the way I'm seeing you now, it's very hard for me to assess what are your impairments. And I can only treat what I assess. So maybe your, your range is affected because of the pain. Maybe it's a certain a muscle imbalance or some weakness in certain muscle groups that's causing you to be more prone towards having these injuries. And so I think a good... A starting point would just be to get an appointment, see a physio, then go through the proper assessment, and then when we talk about treatment, rather than me telling you, uh, uh, just do five seat to stand, and then you run five kilometers, that, that, that's not specific to you, right? We want your treatment to be specific. So I think um, this is not the best venue to do it, but uh, do, do go and speak to a physio. Hydrotherapy, right? Uh, in... Because I used to be in Australia a while ago, and uh, it's a very big thing there. For example, if you have osteoarthritis, and uh, increasing weight bearing over your knees is uh, very painful for you, right? Uh, what 
that does is that when you're walking in the water, the buoyancy lifts your weight up a little bit, so it's more manageable for you to maintain your physical activity. All right, and uh, you can do that if you have a public pool and if you, are, you know what to do in the water, if you can't swim and then, and then and please, please don't try to get into a deep pool. Lah. But what you can do is to walk from one side to the other if you're having knee pains lah, with osteoarthritis like that. But like I said, uh, go see a proper physio and then uh, get a proper assessment from there.